Well, good evening. This is Shani. 6.37 p.m. Pacific Time. Northwest Time. And it is uh, the 20th of February. It's been wonderful. <laughs> I want to say something to um, Phantom 409. That was a very kind compliment. I didn't expect it. And um, that was a nice little thing to say. Thank you. My week has been a little odd. <laughs> We're thrilled going, when hasn't it been? <laughs> true. Absolutely true. Yeah. So anyway, as you know, y'all, <laughs> you make jokes about it. <laughs> How many surgeries does she have? Um, have three in line. And not going to happen. Not really soon anyway. Um, seems I have a little bit of problem with my heart. Um, which, you know. Anyway, my electrolytes dropped really fast. And, uh, they caught it. Right at the moment. Um, so... My heart rate was 30, and it wouldn't let me sleep. Because if I was going to go to sleep, I'd probably die. In the meantime, they had potassium going in through an IV bag. I'll be honest with you. I have never felt so calm in my life. I stopped caring. I didn't fear anything. And I was okay. It was just going. Not saying I'm not grateful for to the doctors. Grateful to the doctors, I really am. I um, I am. Um, of course, they've increased uh, my potassium in pills. So instead of taking one three times a day, I'm taking two three times a day. They're big. They're like horse pills. <laughs> I choke them down. I take, I have a lot of pills, so I've learned how to take them all at once because I can't stand that one at a time thing. I still choke. Yes, I'm smoking a cigarette. I once said I wouldn't start smoking again as I thought I was going to die. Well, I don't know, but I'm smoking again. That's one thing that I care about. Well, not the one thing. I got a lot of kids coming in and out of here. So I must care if they wouldn't be here. But I will tell you one thing. That's breaking my budget. <laughs> not to mention my heart. My heart was broken a long time ago. One time, my doctor said, uh, you know what you're dying from? I said, what? So you're dying from a broken heart. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. Got broken when I was a kid, you know. Then I got broke again every time I'd fall in love and things didn't work out. But it really got broke in 98, 99, when my grandfather died. I think that was my turning point. Um, I turned 40 and um, I went skiing and snowmobiling and racked up a lot of points. <laughs> I was so happy. I mean, I really was happy. I had one year. One year, I didn't have kids. I didn't have anything to worry about. I had a good job. I had my own place. I bought it. I owned my car. It's 
No. Hmm. Before my grandfather died, um, he said, you got to promise me something with the money I'm leaving. I go, what? He goes, buy a vacuum sweeper. Get a decent car that's running. And get a little place of your own. So I did. I kept my word. And, uh, I did. But it didn't keep me from grieving. Grief is a hard thing, you know. This year has been full of grief. Well, this year, the last three months. Well, let's see, it started in November, so November, December. Hmm. January, February, so, yeah, four months of grieving. I can't say that, um, I, I can't, I wish I could make it stop. And I, I wish, I, I just wish everything would calm down. And I wish people wouldn't treat their kids like shit. <laughs> You know, and I wish more than anything, more than anything, that you don't dump your kid on my front door with all their clothes. Actually, didn't do it on the front door. It was on the sidewalk. Doesn't matter. That happened to me once. Oh, a couple of times, but happened to me. Um, when was it? Oh, uh, oh, Jesus! It was years ago. But basically, I ended up with a thirteen-year-old girl. With all those boys. Good Lord. And she was with me till she was 18. Where was her mother? <laughs> yeah. Where was your... Where were you? <laughs> I was going through hell at that time. I was working so many jobs. Where were you? Yeah. Where was she? You know, I read about babies, you know, being left in cars, forgotten about during the summer months and the winter months. One time, years ago, it was, God, about 1999, I was at a, um, a bar and I was watching them play poker. No, I don't play poker very good. Though I do like Texas Hold'em, it's fun, but I never, I never win. <laughs> I don't win the games. No, I do win at 21. It's rare. But when I do, I do. It's pretty good. Mm. Anyway. Well, then in comes this woman, and she was a regular. Last time I saw her, she was pregnant. She wasn't pregnant anymore. Yeah, your baby, I said. Yes. Sat there and she was playing cards, you know. And her husband kept kept getting up and going outside. Didn't know what the hell he was doing. None of my business. But then the owner of the bar came over to me and pulled me aside. And there was a newborn baby in the back seat. And in... December, maybe it was January, it was uh, very cold, very, very cold. She <laughs> was in that bar playing cards and left a brand new baby that was a week old in a car seat, not even a car seat, one of those little things you sit your baby and you know that you can rock them back and forth. Mm hmm um, I just left her there. No. The owner said to me, what should we do? I said, 
call CPS, number one and two, you call the police, you know. That one stuck out of my mind, and it still sticks in my mind because she's just an example of the worst of the worst. And the pain that I felt for that baby. Never to forget that that baby was never taken away. No harm, no foul, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why. But I still think of that little baby. And I wonder how, whatever happened to her, you know. It's just really tiny. I, you know, I know what happened to all the other kids that have come through my door, and they all have actually great successes. They have really good stories of their lives, and to be honest with you, that makes me feel good. That's good. You know, they did it on their own. It was hard, but they did it. Unfortunately, I've had really good success with my grandsons. Well, grandson. <coughs> I've had great successes successes with my animals, you know. I mean, when you get down to it, you know, I mean, my own children, the oldest one's very successful, and the youngest one is very successful, and the middle one is still finding her way. But I can't take credit for anybody's success because they do it themselves. The only thing I do is be me. I cared, and what they did with that care is what they did with the care. I mean, nobody can make somebody something that they're not. And nobody should give credit to somebody that didn't do it themselves. <laughs> I mean, I did myself as far as keeping food in the house and all that, but other than that, you know, I just was not. I was always working. I was always working and stressed. Well now, reality, I have to make a choice. I either take care of myself, not see the youngest grandson achieve or fight and make myself better. Maybe I'm not good for him, you know? I, I mean, I've, I've thought of that. And the, I don't know. I don't know, uh, hell, a lot of things. I can say I know some things, but I don't know everything, and, and I do love kids. I do love kids. So anyway, since I almost died <laughs> yesterday, I obviously wasn't supposed to. Or I would have. I thought to myself at one time, I'll either be total blackness or I'll really go to a heaven or I'll end up in hell. But any of the three ways, I'm going to be gone. 
Unless you'll believe in ghosts and, you know, we do have a cow ghost online. It's possible. <laughs> anyway, I don't have too much to say. Um, you guys have heard it all. You've heard everything. Good night.